news that's on Android.com where we get <laughs> on Android every day. So today is a big day, the Galaxy S5 unboxing, baby. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh. All right, let's do a quick unboxing. I've got three Galaxy S5 here, uh, the T-Mobile black. I've got an AT&T white. I have a Sprint S5, I'm not sure which one that is, but let's go ahead and open up the black T-Mobile one up first. Uh, it comes with, obviously, a box. Uh, it'll show you the carrier if you got it from any of the US carriers. Oh, you know, another cool thing I noticed, uh, I do have a Galaxy S4 box from last year, and the box is actually exactly the same. Um, so the box has not changed, not even a single bit. Um, all they did is put the 5 and the S5. Anyway, let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, I've got the phone here, the Galaxy S5, and it does come with a new SIM card. And let's go ahead and open up the box here. Uh, what does it come with? It comes uh, with a manual, um, a return label, limited warranty. All right, let's put that aside. And of course, we like to go into the nitty gritty of the adapter. Um, this one is rated at uh, 5.3 volts, 2 amps. Um, so that's a very, very powerful, very, very powerful adapter. It does come with the standard earbuds, the Rope earbuds, uh, which I really like. They have probably one of the best earbuds out there on the market that comes free with the phone. And also, of course, the battery here. And let's go take a look at the battery. Uh, let me go ahead and open this up. Very exciting day because all the Galaxy S5s came um, together in one day. Uh, this is a 2800 milliamp hour battery. Uh, which is 200 milliamp hour more than the Galaxy S4 battery. Um, so the battery has gotten a little bit bigger. Now it's a lot thinner, a lot longer. And of course it does come with USB 3.0 cables. Um, these are different uh, from regular standard USB 2.0, obviously. Next year they're gonna have USB 3.1, which is gonna be the size of USB 2.0, but will have USB 3.0 capabilities. This will allow you to charge your phone like twice faster uh, because it handles more amps, more current. And also it is compatible, backward compatible with USB 2.0. Uh, so if you do have USB 3.0 on your computer, that means you'll be able to download stuff faster. Uh, no, sorry. You'll be able to charge your phone faster and also transfer files faster with USB 3.0 technology, uh, which is about twice or three times more faster. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the back. Let me go ahead and cover up the IMEI so you guys don't steal it from me. Uh, and let's go ahead and take a look. There's the 16 megapixel camera. This is an upgrade from the 13 megapixel camera uh, from the Galaxy S4. Uh, and also you'll see a micro SD card slot up here. The top one and the bottom one is this uh, slot for your uh, micro SIM card there. Um, so very similar to the Note 3 design. Also, the speaker is down here now. I'm looking very good. Um, I'm gonna probably tear it apart soon, so uh, don't forget to subscribe. And this is the sticker that it comes with. It's 1080p. It's actually the exact same screen uh, as a Galaxy S4 1080p with Gorilla Glass 3. Oops, I forgot the battery. Uh, but it does feature a larger screen. And also, there is a grommet here. Um, now, with the Galaxy S5, the biggest change is that from the Galaxy S4 is that uh, it is waterproof. Uh, it has an IP67 dustproof waterproof rating. Uh, it means that you'll be able to take your phone underwater about three feet for 30 minutes, uh, and definitely that's a plus. That means the same rating as a Galaxy S4 Active, uh, which I showed you before. You could dunk it in water, you can actually take it for a swim in a pool uh, for like. Pfft, 10 minutes, uh, no problem, take some great underwater shots. Uh, what's the best part about these phones that are IP67 rated, including all the Xperia's, uh, now the Galaxy S5, is the fact that these phones get super dirty. Um, and let me go ahead and turn it on, sorry. I know you guys are all excited. The, the reason is that uh, bacteria gets all over, you get grime, slime. Uh, with these phones, uh, like with my Xperia, what I do is every day, if it's dirty, I just wash it along with my dishes. Uh, such a simple way. And also, I know many of you uh, may be using your phone in the toilet, 
around the toilet, perhaps you drop your phone in the toilet, um, you know, just take it out, wash it, and it's good as new. Uh, that started pretty quick. Now, let me show you some of the details of this phone before we get into the nitty gritty. All right, let's start with the back. Uh, this is the black version, supposedly. It is not actually black. It's actually more like a dark gray. Uh, and it has a 16 megapixel camera there, flash there. And that's actually a heart monitor sensor, a heartbeat sensor. Um, so you can go ahead and place it. It will measure your heartbeat. And let me go ahead and show you the side here. Um, not much has changed since last year. They've added this level of uh, bevels or whatever you want to call it, layers. Um, looks pretty nice. I mean, it's still plastic. Uh, but for those of you wondering about the design of the phone, it has not changed much. Uh, slightly bigger. I'll show you in a second here. And of course, you got the USB 3.0, which has a little cover. That is for the waterproofing. Uh, so you make sure you put that on. Uh, there's a nice USB 3.0 port. Um, you can also put USB 2.0 port to charge it, to transfer files, um, so it is backward compatible. And looking nice and smooth there. Um, you got the power button there, hiding there. And also you've got the 3.5 millimeter jack. Now this phone, you don't have to cover up. It's waterproof by default, uh, just like the Galaxy S4 Active. You got the IR sensor uh, and a bunch of more sensors. Um, the front of the phone looks like this. Um, looking very nice. Now I've got my Galaxy S4 from last year here. Uh, let's go ahead and compare the dimensions. Um, it has actually gotten thicker, just slightly thicker, uh, like one or two millimeters. Um, it did get a little bit longer and wider, um, so resulting in a bigger screen. Uh, one thing I've noticed is the screen is much, much brighter uh, the, than the Galaxy S4. Um, screen is just awesome. And let me go ahead and show you a close-up of uh, this new lock screen, which is quite beautiful. Um, you'll see a very nice, very smooth uh, animated action, uh, which kind of shows you the uh, power of this phone. Now, this phone does come with the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, 801, 2.5 gigahertz, uh, from, up from last year's S4, 1.9 gigahertz. That's almost 30% in jump. Let me show you quickly how big this phone is compared to the Note 3. Um, it is actually a little bit smaller. Um, so the trend is that the, the phones are getting bigger. Uh, people want bigger screen because it's easier to see, uh, easier to type. Uh, that's probably the number one reason why no one's buying iPhones anymore. Now I also do have both colors of the Galaxy S5. Let me give you a quick hands-on look here. Um, the white version is sort of a more like a white pearl. Um, I don't know if you know what white pearl is. Basically, it's like a slightly shiny, slightly grayish, silverish uh, white here. Um, it feels pretty leathery, actually. And also, the black version, uh, is, as I said, is slightly gray, uh, dark gray. Um, actually, the leathery feel is more leathery on the white S5. Let me quickly demonstrate uh, the Galaxy S5 on the left and the Galaxy S4 on the right. I have a custom ROM that has the exact same uh, wallpaper there. And I don't know if the camera picks it up, um, but if you see it in real life, the Galaxy S5 is maybe like 5-10% brighter. Um, which is probably not hugely different, but if you're in the sun often, um, that could make a difference. So what has actually gotten better from last year's Galaxy S4. The Galaxy S5 has full 1080p, uh, 1080 by 1920 resolution. That's full 1080p, 432 ppi pixel density uh, with Gorilla Glass 3. It's exactly the same. The phone screen size has gotten a little bit larger, um, so which means actually a lower ppi density. Uh, but for Naked eye, human naked eye, you're not going to notice any difference. Now, the, probably the biggest change is the USB 3.0 port. Also, it does come with uh, Bluetooth 4.0, which is super low energy. Um, should give you much better battery life. Also, the camera has been up from 13 megapixel to 16 megapixel camera. Uh, that does also 4K video at 30 frames per second. And also, you can do slow motion 60 frames per second at 1080p. I'll have to test it out, but uh, it looks pretty solid. And of course, the biggest thing is the screen and the quad-core processor that is probably the fast on the market. Um, 2.5 gigahertz CPU, that's fastest right now as of this video. Probably the biggest change Samsung has implemented is the menu button. Now it is actually a recent uh, button. So if you wanna actually do menu button, you'll have to press it down 
and that will show you the menu button. Um, also, let me go ahead and show you that it is running the latest Android 4.4.2 KitKat, and also the menus have been changed. Um, this is quick settings here. Um, this is actually pretty neat. Um, you can go ahead and edit the quick settings here, uh, and you can go ahead and unclick data usage. Maybe you want to put uh, NFC save, and now you'll have all of your quick settings up here that you use the most. And of course, it does also have a finger scanner, which I forgot to mention. Uh, basically, um, you can go ahead and uh, register your fingerprint. Um, go ahead and swipe it like this a bunch of times. There you go, it's recognized. Um, you can register up to three fingerprints. I'm not too big on the fingerprint because I used to have the original uh, Motorola Atrix phone, which did have the fingerprint. Uh, but it was kind of a useless feature. But it is there for those of you who are really into fingerprint uh, stuff. Oops, I got lost in track here. Let's go ahead and go to About Device here to show you that it is running the latest Android 4.4.2 KitKat. Uh, if you press a bunch of times, you'll get this bunch of Ks. Go ahead and press the K. Um, go ahead and hold down the Android, and you'll get the uh, the lime pie, the uh, all the all the chocolates, all the honeycombs, all that good stuff. Um, so it is running the latest Android 4.4.2 KitKat. Uh, you'll not have to upgrade. Um, it is running the best of the best right now. And to access Google Now uh, with the regular KitKat phones like um, Galaxy Nexus 5, um, you can go ahead and swipe to the left. Now, default, that will actually give you let me go ahead and show you with my other S5. This is the more stock one. It'll actually give you my magazine, which I really don't like. Um, so what you can do is go ahead and hold down the menu button, go to home screen settings. Uh, go ahead and unclick on my magazine and you'll be able to fully rotate through all of your home screens, which is my preferred method. Now you probably wonder how do you access Google now? Um, you can go ahead and press this button, obviously and that will get you to uh, speak now here. Or you can go ahead and hold down the center button. This will bring you all your Google Now cards, uh, which is nice. Um, also, you can access your Google Now here. Uh, what is the weather in San Francisco? And this will be great uh, while you're driving. Uh, I actually use it when I drive a lot, and if you connect it to your Bluetooth um, on your car, you'll be actually be able to hear it through your stereo. Um, so very nice stuff. Uh, let's take a look at the camera here real quick. Um, the latest Galaxy S5 uh, features all of the features uh, from Galaxy S4, as you can see. Uh, you got beauty face, um, quick shots for uh, action shots, panorama, a virtual tour, but that's pretty much like a photosphere, um, dual camera, um, very good stuff. And uh, something new with Galaxy S5 is this a selective focus. Uh, what this is basically if you're doing a macro shot within uh, 1.5 feet or closer such as this one um, you can go ahead and focus and take a photo and what this will do uh, what I realize is actually taking two shots uh, one in the foreground one in the background and what it will do is blur out the background um, so sort of like depth of field you get with DSLR cameras uh, I find this feature great for those of you photographers um, who need to take a lot of good uh, depth of field shots uh, flowers all that good stuff you're gonna do really well with the Galaxy uh, S5 as you can see here and let me go ahead and show you the camcorder of course um, camcorder on the Galaxy series in general, like the Note 3, S4, S5, uh, it's excellent. you got great focus. Um, you can even pause uh, during videos. Uh, I find it a very good camera, or you can even put it into auto focus mode. Um, so I have no problems with it. And of course, with Galaxy S5, um, you'll get extra features where you can increase the video size to 4K 3840 by 2160. Um, that is just awesome. If you have a 4K video, you're going to be able to take some excellent uh, quality videos in full 4K. Um, so very nice stuff and uh, I really like it. And for those of you coming from a smaller screen like Galaxy S3, S4, iPhone 4 or 5, um, typing on the newer Galaxy S5 is just awesome. Um, you could type pretty fast on it and uh, typing is uh, on the Galaxy S5 is very pleasurable and the uh, the keyboard is just awesome. Um, so definitely the way to go. Now many of you are probably wondering how fast is the Galaxy S5. Uh, let me go ahead and close up all the apps and uh, let's run Quadrant real quick. And uh, this should give you kind of uh, a good feel of how fast this phone is. 
All right, let's look at the result, 23,440. And look at some of the numbers down here. Um, you could probably run it on a Note 3 or S4 and compare these numbers, but um, these are really fast, uh, very nice stuff. Let's go ahead and run N22 next. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close all the apps and I'm gonna go ahead and run N22. And let's see the results uh, with N22 because this is probably more accurate than Quadrant. All right, let's do this. And as you can see here, um, the Galaxy S5 performs a little bit better than the Note 3, obviously. Um, so very good stuff and uh, very good stuff. Probably the biggest feature on the Galaxy S5 is the heartbeat sensor, which comes with S Health app. Uh, it's got the heartbeat sensor there, I told you earlier. Let's go ahead and open up S Health. Uh, also, it does have pedometer, obviously. Um, that's another feature. Let's go ahead and try the heart rate. Um, go ahead and place your finger on the sensor. I'm going to go ahead and do that and try to stay quiet and still. Uh, my last, my last uh, heart, heartbeat was 98 beats per minute. Uh, it's obviously raising a little bit because I've just unboxed a brand new Galaxy S5 and obviously doing this video and increase my heartbeats. Uh, but pretty good stuff for those of you runners, joggers, bikers. This is going to be a great method to measure your heartbeat. Now, a lot of you who've been using Samsung phones, um, especially the smaller S3 or the S4, I'll probably notice the battery life sometimes can drain very fast. Um, now, the Galaxy S5 has this special mode. If you go scroll all the way down to system power saving here, um, you can go ahead and turn on ultra power saving mode. Uh, what this will basically do is turn your phone into a dumb phone, grayscale phone. Uh, but uh, I found that you can actually go for a full day even on 10% battery life. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you. It's going to actually switch to the ultra power saving mode. Uh, this is going to be great if you have important calls coming and you need to receive the calls. Uh, you don't really need to surf the web too much. Uh, but you can still surf the web, uh, send messages, um, use your phone. Um, you can see that with 55% battery, I can go 6.8 days. That's almost a week of battery time. Um, so great feature. And you can easily go back to the regular mode just by disabling it. Of course, also don't forget the smart remote feature. Um, you can control all of your TVs, Direct TV, Comcast using the smart remote here. Um, this is exactly the one found on the Note 3. Uh, and uh, I use it all the time. Um, I've got my Direct TV and also my that's my direct TV and my TV remote there. It works quite well. And also after when you're using it, um, you also have access to it in your uh, lock screen, which is very nice. Call, uh, turn on your TV, turn on your direct TV. Um, so very nice stuff. Overall, I would have to say Samsung has done a terrific job of upping from S4 to S5 with a bigger screen, a better processor, uh, energy saving mode, heartbeat sensor, all that good stuff pretty good stuff i would say it is a very good phone to get if galaxy note 3 is too big for you but you still want the best of the latest definitely you can't go with the galaxy s5 and thanks guys for watching this video as always don't forget to hit that like button down here subscribe button there or wherever it is and as always i'll stay <coughs> on android nice good as new